Skywatch Media News for the last week of February 2022. Over the past few weeks, our star has produced a series of giant eruptions, sending electrically charged plasma particles hurtling millions of miles through space. On February the 15th, a most spectacular CME and solar flare erupted from the far side of the sun. It was an extremely powerful blast of energy, most likely in the extreme category of an X-class flare. Lucky for us, the huge eruption was not Earth-directed, but it could signal that something dramatic is on its way. This is only the second far-side disturbance of this size since September of 2017, when a coronal wave traveled past both poles, ending up as a big proton event. According to Space Weather Live, which tracks solar activity, the sun has erupted every day in the month of February, with some days producing multiple flares. This would include three M-class flares on the 12th, 14th, and 15th of this month, as well as five M-class flares in the month of January. The remaining flares that occurred in February have been of the less powerful C-class category. The plasma ejecta from a solar eruption would normally take a few days to reach Earth, as was the case when a rather mild geomagnetic storm knocked out 40 newly launched Starlink satellites from their low Earth orbit. The event was produced by an M-class flare that was ejected from the Sun's surface on January the 29th. The number of Starlink satellites being placed into orbit have become a genuine concern for space experts. There are presently over 9,300 tons of space objects orbiting the Earth, including an inoperative satellite and spent rocket stages. These objects have increased the overall brightness of the night sky by more than 10%, rendering large portions of the Earth light polluted. This is the most dynamic time as the sun ramps up activity towards and during solar maximum. On February 12th, there were two spectacular flares from the sun's southern region. The sun numbers have been fairly productive for most of February, although they are not all actively erupting. Solar maximum is due to occur around July of 2025 but the activity is difficult to predict because we don't know what drives each of the 11-year cycles. Recent research has suggested that solar activity is driven by the planetary alignment of Earth, Venus, and Jupiter, each of which asserts a small gravitational tug on the Sun as they orbit it, even though they are much smaller in size. The research was conducted by looking back at 1,000 years of solar cycles and comparing the data against the movement of the planets during the time period between 1,000 and 2009. What they discovered was that the link between solar cycles and planetary movement was strong, with everything pointing to a clock process in the 11-year cycle. They found that the tidal forces are strongest when the three planets, Earth, Jupiter, and Venus, align, and that the alignment occurs every 11.07 years, occurring at the same time as the solar minimum. But even with the recent research suggesting a correlation between planetary alignment and solar cycles, scientists found evidence in the year 2020 that we might be entering the strongest cycle ever recorded. Although we cannot be sure that the rest of this cycle will continue to outpace its predicted activity, it behooves us to stay vigilant and hopeful that the sun doesn't deliver another Carrington event, at least not for the foreseeable future. Earlier this month, scientists issued a Yellowstone alert, noting that a swarm of earthquakes were recorded in a short time period near the Yellowstone supervolcano. The University of Utah Seismographic Station 
recorded 105 earthquakes during the month of January, with the largest being a magnitude 2.5 located near Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone National Park. Volcano experts at the USGS have warned that the state of Idaho is, in their words, extremely likely to experience multiple earthquakes and eruptions prior to seismic or volcanic activity near Yellowstone's caldera. The warning was issued as seismic activity has risen in central Idaho in the past 20 months, prompting fears of something sinister developing in the neighboring Yellowstone Park. The most significant aspect of an eruption, when it occurs, would be the gases associated with an ash cloud that are released into the atmosphere, which have the tendency to spread quickly around the world. It's important to note that just over 200 years ago, in 1816, the Earth experienced a year without a summer when global temperatures decreased between one half and one degree Celsius. The evidence suggests the temperature abnormality was caused by the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora, the most powerful recorded eruption in history to date. Yellowstone has captured the attention of scientists from all corners of the world. In recent years, they have been suggesting that people living in close proximity to the caldera would have no chance of escaping in the event of an eruption. Although they insist that an eruption is not imminent, they continue to reiterate the possibility that Yellowstone, one of the world's largest volcanoes, is gearing up to explode. All volcanoes provide some type of warning before they erupt, although the timing of an eruption is seldom if ever known. As in the case with Yellowstone's caldera, the first sign of an eruption would be the ground rising. Prior to the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980, the mountain bulged by as much as five feet per day, producing a giant lava dome before the side of the mountain finally gave way resulting in a catastrophic explosion. A similar uplift most likely would occur at Yellowstone, where magma located below the surface would rise and split the rocks above. In this case, it would lift the entire caldera some 10 feet into the air. Another sign of an eruption would be the swarms of earthquakes that would produce distinctive primary waveforms on seismographs as a result of rocks fracturing. This would occur before the actual eruption. The caldera would experience a long and continuous vibration. Magma would quickly move through the open spaces, vibrating the walls of the conduit and producing a rumbling signal called a harmonic tremor, which increases in pitch as the eruption nears. is the final warning before an eruption. There is one obvious catch when it comes to the prospect of a super eruption. Back in 2013, earthquake data from Yellowstone was analyzed. It was determined that the magma chamber is 50 miles long and 12 miles wide. It has an underground volume of 960 cubic miles which is two and a half times bigger than previously thought. The analysis also determined that the proportion of molten rock in the chamber is too low to allow for a super eruption. But this was refuted by research conducted by Arizona State University in the year 2017, which indicated that Yellowstone's magma reservoir can undergo rapid change and reach eruptive capacity within just decades. Our planet is ever-changing, the land, the oceans, and our atmosphere. Even the sun is changing over time. In the midst of these changes, both big and small, 
the earth in all of its greatness will withstand the test of time. But the same cannot be said for humanity. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and always keep looking to the sky.